are fully informed and you can make your vote right now in the chat if you think never lucky is going to be able to take it take that hashtag nly hit enter if you think that the move is going to be able to take it don't just spam the move emote and chat hashtag tm and put a vote in for the move both of these teams trying to get to the land never lucky very close to being able to do it. A solid performance in this tournament. Not even anything too crazy. Maybe enough for them to lock it up. The move may need to go all the way. They need to get it started right here and right now. The BlizzCon runner-ups, the move. They need a top finish here if they want to earn enough points to qualify. Never Lucky currently tied for that fourth position to advance to the Spring Finals in that LAN event for a chance to qualify directly to the World Finals. And of course, a massive prize pool as well. It would be devastating for the move to not make it this is the first time that we've seen them performing finally in the upper bracket with the best shot that they're going to get to try and qualify currently peekaboo under fire although i would say the positioning is prime for him if he is able to stand on three members of the team never lucky is a little bit reluctant to push forward i think it's a smart decision to wait for these infernals of whiz k peekaboo is trying to initiate an attack whiz k marching himself over but with that chains of ice so difficult to actually get in line of sight, but the main reason we see the Destruction Warlock with the Assassination Rogue is that Peekaboo can run a Fan of Knives build, and if the enemy team wants to avoid the Destruction Warlock and utilize the Pillar in line of sight and clump up together, then the Assassination Rogue will maximize his damage, in this case Peekaboo, and if they try to leave the Pillar to slow down the damage of the Assassination Rogue, then you've got a Destruction Warlock cat free casty on you, which is why we've seen this composition, which was first pioneered by the team of Storm, and then we saw the team of the Super Frogs basically hijack it, and now we also see the move picking up here in game number one. I would say compositionally, however, Never Lucky come out ahead. What I really want to see is if Colo has improved his mana efficiency on that Mistweaver Monk. That was my biggest criticism of his Mistweaver last week. Their team overall had good setups, nice burst windows, but Colo would always be running out of mana and just unable to push through for that final kill. Let's see if he's improved here for this week. We're on cup number five. There's only one more after this to qualify. Yep, never lucky. I think they've come in with a solid game plan. Zach's actually running the Tiger Eye Brew PvP talent, and basically what that is, it is a buff that you you gain by spending chi. So Zach, although he's sitting behind the pillar right now, every time he uses a spinning crane kick, anytime he uses anything that costs chi, he's slowly building up the Tiger Eye Brew buff, and eventually he's going to be able to use that to bypass armor and make an all-in push onto Wiz K. So. They can sit back here, build up 10, 20 stacks of Tiger Rivalry. That's going to give them a lot of momentum, a lot of damage to sort of get through a lot of the defense that Destruction Warlock has available. So I think it's likely what Never Lucky's doing right now is they're trying to pick their moment in this game where potentially dampening ramps up a little bit higher and they can make an all-in push onto Wizkay to take him down. But the pressure on Peekaboo has actually been really good, and he needs to be a little careful making these offensive pushes. Yeah, but before dampening, I think attacking the, the Assassination Rogue is the best target for Never Lucky lucky and they might be able to bait absturge into a bit of a trap with his heal over time effects they managed to get peekaboo behind the pillar they go for a double stun lock absturge repositions and able to stabilize no overreaction on the side of the move. They're exchanging cooldowns one for one. Now we see some counter pressure as WizK is able to free cast. Zack has to exchange Touch of Karma to try and protect himself, but even still under immense pressure, multiple Malik's flying in, soaking up the heals. Zack in trouble. He could just fall down to an Immolate. He's just gonna die to the dot damage. Colo gets caught in crowd control. Big mistakes by Never Lucky. The move capitalized. And in this fifth cup, but after we get out of this one, we need to talk about Weez K a little bit more and really start to talk about just how important he is for the move. Dollar and Sewers, gates open. Yeah, and keep in mind, going into this game, Never Lucky, they actually 3 0 Storm. And we know Storm, their main composition is this Druid, Assassination Rogue, Destruction Warlock. So Never Lucky knows what they need to do in this matchup. They just need to execute. Now, what can they get done? In the last game, they played very passive, just trying to grip in Peekaboo. But I don't think it's a bad idea for them when they get the Tiger Ivory stacks to push in, try to get some pressure rolling on Wiz K. Even outside of dampening, you do have enough burst of potential to start forcing out some cooldowns and tax Absurge mana without too much of a threat to yourself. Zach trying to ring a piece Wiz K away from his demonic gateway for the Abomination to burst him down, but the Abomination is very slow to advance to its target, so Wiz K ended up just taking very little damage, finally able to connect, and Never Lucky are playing a lot more aggressive. It's potentially that they were just afraid in game one. They wanted to play it very safe, and 
it gave the move tons of opportunity to say, all right, we know exactly how to end the game now because you're making it so easy for us by not getting aggressive. Sometimes putting pressure on the other team is a good way to sort of screw up their game plan because they're under pressure. We do see a trade of the anti-magic zone onto the Dark Soul, but it was not the Inferno, so WizK baiting out a defensive cooldown. This could be an opening for WizK and Peekaboo to find a kill. Valido opting to trade anti-magic shield while already positioned at the pillar. It's I was saying that they're looking more aggressive, but now they're looking to be still kind of hesitant, and if there is any hesitation against the move, they will pounce on it. Yeah, and that last exchange, Zach, he traded out his Touch of Karma. I think he trinketed. Valido used Anti-Magic Zone. Cola used Revival, three-minute Mystery cooldown. They weren't in that much trouble, and I feel like Never Lucky, that was kind of a panic moment for Here them. Go. The move, they're going to be pushing in. Infernals are dropped down with a stun on Colo. Preemptive Life Cocoon, but so far the move just shredding through it. Zach could still be in a lot of trouble. He's trying to cross the map, but caught into a Mortal Coil. Colo gets interrupted. Beautiful ring of peace by Zach to keep Peekaboo off his back and allow him to cast out some Vivifies and Colo to finally get some heals connected. Zach with a nice crackling Jade Lightning knocking Peekaboo off. It's a nice little move by the Windwalker Monk of Zach. Nicely done. We'll have to see what they can get done now as Colo is going to be using his way of the crane to make an aggressive push onto WizK. Absurge gets gripped in into the double stun, but a preemptive Iron Bark should shut this damage down. I think one win condition for Never Lucky, the safest one is to make sure that Absurge never drinks, never resets his mana. The Mistweaver will outdo the Druid if the Druid is unable to find any drink opportunities. They already have a significant lead in that regard. They have Touch of Karma to exchange Icebound Fortitude to push forward. Absurge knows that he's losing on mana, sits down for a drink. Is anyone going to stop him? It looks like he's getting denied as the team, both Peekaboo and WizK tag team to d together to deny them from denying the drink. Absurge now bounces back to full mana. Unfortunately, a bit of a mistake. They stack up here for a triple stun. This could be an opening for Never Lucky. They managed to pull the unending resolve from WizK. A pivotal defensive cooldown to a Warlock's survival. Definitely can't be affording to stack up like that again. However, the map does play into that strategy of Never Lucky. Strategically, they've set themselves up well to get a win on the board here. Zach being pressured. Colo trades that life cocoon. Trying to look for the openings here. Vendetta in 27 seconds. They might make a swap to Colo. We do see another death grip strategy. Peekaboo was able to dodge the leg sweep. Nice awareness on his part. Realizing if they get triple stunned, it's going to be very dangerous for the entire team. So Peekaboo will be weaving in and out when he anticipates these death grips to try and avoid being stunned. Just top level play you'd expect to see from the move. Yeah, definitely. Zach with the touch of death. This is an opening. No iron bark, no unending resolve for WizK. They might be able to make a push here. Polo caught into a mortal coil. WizK trying to deny this assault, but what can he get done? I really feel like never lucky if they had just waited a little bit more patient with the way of the crane. They could have made a huge push onto WizK, but this could be it. Zach's still not committing the touch of death, though. That's really going to be the moment where you know never lucky is looking to close out the game, incapacitate onto Absurd. Nice ring of peace knocks him off, but still in a good position to heal up WizK right now. WizK getting low. What is Absurge going to do? He has to hold on another eight seconds until that iron bark to top him off, but Peekaboo and WizK have been doing a good job keeping pressure up on Never Lucky during these pushes, and Cola's mana is not looking that great. And we see Absurge just tossing in a couple Solar Wraths to try and add a little bit of extra damage to the team. It's putting a lot of pressure on Zack, potential opening. Zack portals away, Glyre's Maldix is flying in. Double Shadow Fury, Peekaboo can't connect. Ring of Peace denying that for now. Colo's mana not looking too good. Absturge taking the opportunity while the team, enemy team is running away to sit down for a drink. This is the perfect timing. Now it's up to Never Lucky to decide to either stop the drink or to counter regress. They managed to accomplish both. Mana still slightly in favor of the move, and this is the mana efficiency I was talking about with Colo. I'm not sure if he's just feeling the pressure. He's using Way of the Crane outside of mana T too frequently, but he's going to run out of Way of the Crane pushes, and as soon as that isn't a threat on the table, then we will see the move push in. Yeah, Absurge actually sitting down for a drink as Dampening oh. just kicked in. Colo getting sapped up. Peekaboo finds the full kidney shot on Zack. He has Trinket and Karma, so Zach's not going to be in that much trouble. He just ports one millimeter. Unfortunately, Zach needs to be really careful with those portal positionings. Put it behind the pillar. Because you have that port in the open, and that's your get out of jail free card. You're not really getting out of jail, especially if it's just completely in WizK's line of sight. So definitely a little bit of a misplay there. 
Um, never lucky, still making a push on the Wizk, but hasn't been able to find the damage. Once again, Absurge denies with the Iron Bark, as well as the Thorns on this leg sweep. Wizk only has 10 seconds left on that unending resolve. Once he gets that back up, he's going to be feeling relatively healthy. And for Never Lucky, all three members are rotting down low. I think it's likely we see Colo use the way of the crane shortly to try to top off his team. All right, Infernals have landed. Wizk's trying to ramp up some huge bursts. Colo gets spell locked. This could be devastating. Looks like he wants to wave the crane. Anti-Magic Zone will deny these Dark Soul Chaos Bolts, well-timed by Valido. Great Anti-Magic Zone, good triple stun setup. Colo needs to find an opportunity to wave the crane, but he's waiting for the crowd control diminishing returns. The longer he waits, the more he'll fall behind. WizK being pressured though, unending resolve no longer available. This could be a big push. There's no iron bar for 15 seconds. WizK knows that, tries to gateway off to safety, but they will, all three members connect. They need to interrupt Absturge's healing. We saw Cervantes in the past on that Death Knight being the main point of contention to stop the Nourish spell from being casted. Currently, it doesn't seem like they've got the disruption. Zack's on the back foot, unable to escape, trying to crackling Jade Lightning, Peekaboo off the side. Ring of Peace denies the reconnect. Valido death grips Peekaboo away, but Zack is still dangerously low. Blind gets traded out. Cola tries to trink it. Life Cocoon will soak that up, but you can really see the hesitation in Never Lucky. I think the move are just moments away from sinking their teeth in, in game number two. Yeah, Peekaboo making a play onto Colo, and Colo with almost no mana left. It's going to be danger time for Never Lucky, especially with WizK completely stabilizing. Colo moves in, looking for some damage. All three members of Never Lucky trying to set something up. The beautiful grip, double leg sweep on the Absurge on and WizK, but once again, Absurge with the preemptive Iron Bark and Thorns. WizK is going to be able to redirect a lot of that damage with the Thorns from Absurge, and then sort of force Never Lucky to retreat. All right, mana now totally tapped here for Colo. Maybe one more way of the crane. A minute and 30 second window to kill WizK with that opportunity. They need to disrupt crowd control, so this would be a mortal coil or a fear. So stunning WizK will deny both of those. In the meantime, Zach gets caught. Peekaboo Shadow steps over, trying to close the game out. If WizK can get a Chaos Bolt, Zach line of sights. Abster just literally BM Solar Wrathing Zach <laughs> right next to him. Zach actually has to spear and strike a Solar Wrath. You can just tell that Never Lucky are so far on the back foot. Cole getting sapped again. Zach has to heal himself. Cole has been out of the fight for so long. Deeper into dampening. Valido now will become a target. Cole is desperately still trying to recover mana. It's, it's critical if he can get it. Now he's got enough mana to use Wave the Crane multiple times. Absturge is significantly lower, even though the pressure is in favor of the move right now. Never Lucky can make a big push. They've still got a 50 second window and they're going for it. Yeah, here it is. Kidney shot though on Zach, trying to shut that down. Still no trinket available, but Zach with Touch of Karma, with Touch of Death. Definitely WizK going to be feeling a lot of pain here. It looks like Nether Ward will redirect a lot of that Touch of Karma damage onto Zack. Cole's going to have to dispel that or it'll be a lot of damage. It looks like he's going to trade out the Life Cocoon onto Zack so they can continue this pressure. Touch of Death rolling on WizK. What is Absurge going to do? Almost no mana left. Never Lucky playing into their win condition. 23% dampening. WizK caught into a stun. Can the move really force Never Lucky to retreat at this point in the game? There's just not too much left for them to work with, Sid. Yeah, this is where I was saying that WizK will be tested is deeper into dampening on the Destruction Warlock. How can he counter aggress when everything is being thrown at him? Will he be able to force Never Lucky back? It's looking not to be the case as WizK will fall in game number two. Never Lucky, they've got good setups. There's definitely hesitation. Sudden, he is going to be on the Monk. We've seen it quite a bit this season. On the other side, we're going to see WizK, who has become a Warlock. Now, WizK, somebody who we have seen multi-class even throughout last year. Every time he did do it, he stepped up to the plate. He did perform. He's trying to do it again here, but it is already the final hour. Cup number five, only six to try to make it to the first land of the year. Who is going to make it? The move or Never Lucky? I mean, the move, they're desperate to do it. Never Lucky are currently tied for that fourth place position, but with the Mew Mew Kitty Cats already out of the competition, Never Lucky could establish a significant lead in that fourth place spot. And then what does the move do? Even maybe a top finish in the sixth cup might not be enough. Everything is on the line for the move. They're already being pressured with two members dangerously low on health. Seconds within the match starting. After just really feeling the heat. Yeah, a lot of pressure early on from Never Lucky. Peekaboo getting a little bit low. Faint should be able to deny a lot of this incoming damage. Now it's going to be up to Wizkay and Peekaboo to try to reverse the pressure. In the last two games, I really feel like it was on Zach. Zach on his Windwalker Monk, he's been doing a great job offensively, making the pushes, getting the double leg sweeps, and then putting out significant damage. But I just really want to see Zach 
defensively, rotate a little bit better, have better uh, transcendence positioning as well because I feel like he's the main target in this matchup and as long as he's playing well defensively, I think Never Lucky is going to easily walk away with the series. So we often talk about the blind pick and in this series it's of utmost importance. The compositions that Never Lucky are playing, they definitely prioritize small maps whereas the move would like big maps. Right now the move have the advantage in terms of comp and map selection. So we've gone to Asher Main's fall. They've got open field. But because uh, the move were able to win on game number one, they will always be able to bring it to the big battlefield should this series swing all the way to a game five. So Never Lucky have to win on this particular swing match or on a game five, but there's way more pressure on a game five. They would much rather win it here. I'm wondering why the move didn't necessarily lock in Tolveron over Ashamanes to try and make sure that they don't inevitably maybe fall down to the pressure. We see firing on both sides as Zach dips low. Colo exchanges life with Kuhn, but now they reverse it with both Peekaboo and WizK getting bursted. Tons of damage from both teams here. Absurge gets crowd control. Peekaboo gets swapped to. I really like this multi-pressure, this two-pronged attack from Never Lucky. It's a super effective strategy when facing down a Restoration Druid, and they're looking a lot stronger in game number three. Yeah, definitely really important, especially if they can slow down the drinks of Absurge. It will really tax his mana, and that's really when we see the Mistweaver Monk have that lead over the Restoration Druid. Colo and Zach positioning very close to Absurge, and I like that because Absurge is going to have to create distance if he wants to find enough time to actually get out of combat and look for drinks. Zach with a Crackwing Jade Lightning keeps him in combat for now. I really want to see Colo move across the map on top of Absurge. Just play on Absurge, stop the drinks like right now, which is really important. Zach with good uh, backup, good awareness, was able to shut that down. I feel like as long as Never Lucky can keep up this pressure, inevitably they will have a mana lead. Absurge, 50% mana already. And that's definitely a huge win condition uh, for this Windwalker Death Knight. Galito trying to line up his anti-magic zone with the Dark Soul, but WizK is splitting up his aggressive cooldowns, I, and I like this decision on his part. It makes it difficult for Never Lucky to decide their cooldown management. You'd normally see Infernals and Dark Soul used at the same time, but by splitting them up, he's got two threats that they need an answer for. Now that anti-magic zone isn't available for Infernals in 10 seconds, Zack is still getting pressured. Colo's caught in a fear with no trinket. Will he fall? If they can break this touch of karma, WizK is going for it, gets interrupted. Zack doesn't want to risk it. Similarly, to game number one, and Colo gets sapped out of that crowd control. Perfect timing by Peekaboo. Zack still dangerously low. Potentially the move taken here. The Ring of Peace denies a bit of damage, but ultimately Zack is going to get crushed. The move now advanced to match point. All right, now we really haven't had a chance completely throw the entire region of NA up in the air. They can be the gatekeepers here, but first up, it's the move versus Never Lucky. The move trying to end this one and move forward. Never Lucky going to try to solidify their place in the top four. This is the best shot that the move are going to get, and it's possibly the final shot that the move are going to get if they want to qualify to the spring finals. They can take fate into their own hands. They can remove their own competition. Never Lucky currently in that fourth place slot. If the move can overcome them advance and take a first place finish they set themselves up so well for cup number six to make it all the way will whiz case substitute on this destruction warlock absurd switching over to druid have they finally stepped up their play to compete with the best now on a new composition so far they're looking solid against never lucky but when they advance to the next round potentially having to face the boys which we would argue is a tier above with that windwalker death knight will they be able to overcome that so much on the line for the move yeah, definitely. We'll have to see what they can get done in this game. I'm going to be looking at the gear here shortly for Never Lucky. I want to see if they've made any adaptations in this game. Try to help Zach survive a little bit more. Well, we'll definitely have to see. Zach moves in, still trying to roll some pressure onto Wiz K, but Absurge looking to deny and redirect that damage with Thorns. Bolito making a push with the Asphyxiate stun on Absurge, initiating some crowd control. Colo playing a little bit safe right now. Doesn't want to wave the crane just yet. Uh, he's been doing a little bit better of a job so far, picking his moments when his team is low and he can make the best use of wave the crane, both defensively and offensively, for a big push onto Wiz K. And I think now, now that Absurge already committed the Iron Bark, this is a great time for Colo, where they can get aggressive, commit the touch of death, try to get the unending resolve, and start getting some cooldowns rolling from the move. All right, Absurge's mana is not looking great. Now gripped into a double stun. The one thing I love about Peekaboo 
is he knows when Absurd is going to get death grip, and he always sidesteps, avoids being stunned, and doesn't allow himself to get bursted down. That's really high level awareness. He's not tunneling into maximizing his damage. He knows exactly where Absurd is positioned, and he's avoiding so many stun locks, not only reducing the damage that he takes, but also maximizing the damage that he does. It's very subtle when he's able to do it, but he's doing it consistently. I think that may have been the fourth or fifth leg sweep in a row that I see Peekaboo just sidestep and avoid. The other thing that I love about the move is they're always calculated. They don't just immediately send the Infernals in and try and max out their damage. They'll play it patiently. They'll wait in the shadows, try and see some hesitation, potential weakness, and then immediately pounce on that weakness to try and go for a kill. I like what Whiskey is doing in this position. Infernals, no Dark Soul. Is he going to combo it together? Will he mix it up this time around is then the real question. Colo's caught in a fear. It would be a good opportunity for WizK to go all the way. If he can get these Chaos Bolts off, they're going to hit huge. Zach gets crushed. Multiple defensive cooldowns forced on that. Still signs of weakness, but now counter-aggression. WizK is being pressured down. Peekaboo's trying to support him. With Thorns activated, both teams could be in trouble. Yeah, definitely. A lot of pressure here onto Wiz K. Zach and a kidney shot with no touch of karma. Going to be feeling vulnerable as he transcendence away to safety. And Colo connect the heals. If we look at mana, Colo are already down to around 50%. The move has been doing a great job making sure they're keeping up consistent pressure in this game. Absurge sneaks away for a drink. Unfortunately for him, that gets shut down. And Never Lucky are able to secure that mana lead, which is very important. And I've noticed after looking at Neverlucky's gear, none of them are running Maledict, which is really interesting. That's not something we normally see from any team. I feel like, for the most part, it's very standard to run all three Gladiators Maledict's Trinket. They're opting not to, and I think it's potentially because of the Nether Ward from WizK, but still, I feel like that's something they could definitely use to punish WizK when he's using Nether Ward to reflect Touch of Karma damage not running Maledict. That just tells me that they want to win on mana 100%, and so far they do at least have that win condition, but Glyre's Maledict is easily the strongest potential burst in the game right now, and I'm not sure if I agree with that decision on their part. We see another sap out of fear. Peekaboo setting up for a win. Can WizK get these Chaos Bolts off? Zach's on the run. Maledict flies in from Absurds. They're looking to close. Colo still in center field. Not getting in line of sight of Zach. WizK, though, is pinned down, not able to connect, forced to attack Valido. And before dampening, all of these Chaos Bolts will be nullified by the Death Strike of Valido. Mana still in favor of Never Lucky. They're looking strong to go to a match point with a game number five, but it will be on Tolveron Arena. And I'm almost wondering if they're going to change composition on game number five to maybe the Demon Hunter Death Knight. WizK getting pressured. Never Lucky trying to just overwhelm him with huge burst potential. Tries to gate to safety, but you're not going to be kiting monks too effectively. Valido is having a hard time reconnecting, but inevitably does. Death Grip gets missed on the leg sweep. Big mistake there. Uh, Valido able to cover it up with a stun of his own. Maybe potentially get a kill off the back of it. Peekaboo with great peel, saving the day. Great awareness, realizing that dire situation with no one any resolve and no iron bark. He uses blind on the Windwalker, who has no trinket. Has to Zach will have to sit through that and a sap, which is an extended chain. 16 seconds for Absurds to restabilize and rotate their defensive cooldowns. Peekaboo trying to stall it out, but now without blind available on Colo, they do lose some offensive potential. So it's a good stall tactic, but now they're going to lose opportunity. They're trying to cover it up. Whiskey drops the Infernals. Smoke bomb gets oh. dropped. Huge damage potential here from the move. They look to close it out, and they do so. I love watching the move, man. Just find these opportunities. Feed versus the fake Zebras. We're all tied up. One and one. Who is going to find themselves on match point? Who is going to get a little bit further into this tournament? Keep in mind, folks, we're doing a brand new thing. You have just entered in the middle of history the longest series that has ever been played in Battle for Azeroth.